of these women are Barbie. And Barbie is all of these women. I feel like everyone has a Barbie memory. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. Hi, Barbie. I have a very vivid, visceral memory of looking at Barbie behind the box and that feeling of wanting her shoes and her hair to be perfect. When you're little, when you're playing with your dolls, you're thinking, God, I wish it was real. Why can't it be real? This is the best day ever. It is the best day ever, and so is yesterday, and so is tomorrow, and so is the day after tomorrow, and every day from now until forever. Yeah! When I was growing up, I was a huge, huge fan of Barbie. I inherited some from my sisters, so I had almost 30 Barbies, not to brag. I definitely had Barbies. I'd definitely make them, make them kiss. Why? I'm actually not sure. If I'm being perfectly honest, Barbie was not my thing. <gasps> but now I love Barbie. Oh my God, I had a weird Barbie. I definitely remember making all my Barbies weird Barbies and trying to color on them and cut their hair. It's cool. There's just an immediate reaction that people have to her. And so we had to create a world that everyone could see themselves as a Barbie or could see themselves as a Ken. to Bobby's Dreamhouse. Come on in. This is my breakfast table and my kitchen. We're in the living room right now. Here's a fun little bar and the slide that goes from the bedroom down into the pool. Not super practical, but nothing is for Barbie. It's just fun and gorgeous and it's see-through. So we can see each other, all the Barbies in their own Barbie dream houses wake up in the morning and they can wave at each other. This is like the product of so many discussions and so many references and I can't even tell you the meetings we've had about pink. We like sat with all these different kinds of pinks and we were like, what is the pink and how do the pinks interact? Because I didn't want it to be so classy that it didn't, like when I was a little girl, I liked the pinkest, brightest things. But this is our white. This is our palest pink that's our white. It was pretty incredible seeing this set for the first time. It was kind of surreal because I'd spent so long looking at the miniatures and the models and the drawings and the design, you know, of what it was gonna look like. and then when you see it firsthand in real life, it's all there and it's like, it's, I don't know, it's, it was really exciting. When we first stepped onto this set, we all were just, it's like we're in the, the real deal. So we don't have to imagine it all, it's just there in front of us. How special is that? <laughs> because Barbie was invented in 1959, it felt like we could ground everything in that look. 1950s soundstage musicals, Gene Kelly, or Vincent Minnelli, like those kind of wonderfully fake but emotionally artificial spaces. <laughs> One thing that like those, those soundstage musicals did so well were beautiful artificial skies. There's a sort of surrealness of the gradation of color. We're getting a blue sky, we're painting white clouds on it, and when you light them, you can light them into these intense colors. So you can light pink and orange from the bottom, and blue from the top. You can really go kind of expressionistic with it. Sarah Greenwood, our production designer, Katie and her whole team have just done the most extraordinary job putting this together. A lot of the things you see are actually handmade. It's pretty incredible what they can do, how they can design things in miniatures and then replicate them. Our main time frame was from the invention of Barbie through to now. The timeless pieces, which also has an echo to the actual toys that are in the dream house that Mattel make today. It's very simple and clear and beautiful. And that was one of Greta's keywords. It has to be beautiful. It has to be beautiful as well. Walking into those environments and feeling the kind of artistry and the love and the playfulness. It just was so exciting. You know the one thing that was a surprise were all the little monkeys, <laughs> if you see any monkeys around? I didn't ever see them in the drawings and I got to set and I, I'm just gonna kick out of there. I love the bubble bath. I, I, my favorite design feature is obviously the slide that goes to the pool. And now we do a whole bit in Barbie's day where she slides down the pool to go down and have her breakfast. Taking it probably from the late 50s to the, through the 60s was a big influence of that sort of modernist furniture that was coming through. The kitchen's great, so we have a mixture of you know, things that are physically there, but then also decal, because again, playing into the world of 
toys and, and how it would look if it was a Mattel product. Um, our kitchen being a great example of that. So on the back here, you have just a decal, uh, you know, so it is intentionally 2D and it's that thing where we want things to be obviously artificial, but still very satisfying. Come and see the pool. There is no water in Barbie land. There's no water or fire. There are no elements. It's actually funny to see how many people avoid walking. Everyone walks around the pool. Even though it's fake, it's really beautiful, which is kind of like everything in Barbie land. Let's take a look upstairs. We are right next to Barbie's wardrobe and this is where she brushes her hair. Ivana, our hair makeup designer, and I have had a lot of fun on this job. There's been a lot of wigs. All the Barbies really can change their hair in a kind of unrealistic, impossible, magical way. In one scene, she might have hair up here, and then the very next scene, it's a giant long ponytail. I want everyone to feel like they can reach onto the screen and touch everything. I mean, so emotionally, just remembering, like, standing in Toys R Us, looking Barbies with the plastic sheet over it, and everything in you wanted to take it off and take everything apart and touch everything. Just talking about Greta wanting to go inside the box, that's actually Barbie's wardrobe. This is the beautiful wardrobe yeah. that does open and the there's magical, all the clothes. The magical wardrobe. Yeah. This was a design thing that we were very excited about. We were saying that the wardrobe in Clueless, like the bar was set so high and we would really like to do something that is as cool as that. Barbie each day, her outfit is already magically here in her wardrobe. She opens the doors. All she needs to do is look at it, gives a spin, and then it's on her body. She walks off and her outfit for the next day is sitting in the wardrobe behind her. This is Barbie's toothbrush. This is how she brushes her teeth. This is her shower. There is, of course, no water in Barbie land, but she showers nonetheless. I actually just um, would look up the old Radox commercials and try and replicate that. Good night, Barbies. I'm definitely not thinking about death anymore. Come up and see Barbie's bedroom. She wakes up with perfect hair, no morning breath. Her pajamas are impossibly ironed and beautiful still and she feels great, energized for another perfect day in Barbie land. So the way Barbie gets into her car, she walks to the edge and she impossibly floats down into her car. Greta said, you know, no one actually walks their Barbie down the steps to get into the car. You just take them from one thing and just plop them into the next thing. And as you can see, Barbie has a pretty amazing view of Barbie land from here. And she can see where all her friends are, Barbie Emma's house, Bobby Anna's house, Bobby Alex's house, and over there is where Skipper and Midge live in little Skipper's treehouse thing, which you may have noticed was replicated from the actual toy. We consider it a heritage site. <laughs> So now Barbie is ready to start her perfect day. This is where she gets her mail, by the way. All the writing in Barbie land is actually just gibberish. It's just scribbled the way kids kind of write endless amounts of, you know, nothing. But it's all very beautiful. Thank you for coming to see the dream house. I have to get back to set now. Bye-bye. Barbie is a film about being human, about becoming human. Greta was the first person and the only person we went to because I love her as a writer, as a director. Do you just hold on for one second? Sublime! I knew that she would be doing something that feels relevant and current. Amazing. Great. I love that one. She's an incredibly generous, brilliant person. Greta's enthusiasm is just completely contagious. Three, two, one. Fear, let us show you. Yes, that's great. <laughs> I feel like we've always used dolls as a way to kind of understand ourselves through play. I thought, well, wouldn't it be wonderful if she was allowed to be like us and to be flawed and messy and not have to be perfectly perfect? I'm fine. A-okay. Greta's the best. That's great. She's an incredible director. I think she's an auteur. I don't understand how a person has that clear of a vision for every single detail of the movie. Greta's sense of humor and intelligence and warmth and heart is in everything.
Greta described the script as human emotion expressed through dolls. And it was exactly that. I wanted to paint in big, beautiful, broad strokes and build this crazy world and have it be funny and real and relatable. And I just want people to feel joyful. Barbie! Hope you enjoyed your behind the scenes look. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you here next time. Later.